Please stay tuned for important disclosure information at the conclusion of this episode. Welcome to the Investing Insights Podcast from Morningstar. In this week's podcast, we highlight three wide moat dividend stocks our top managers like. Russ Kennel shares Morningstar's favorite ESG funds. Damian Conover covers the healthcare sector's strong performance. And David Meets fills us in on how energy outshined other sectors. Let's get started. Here's what the ultimate stock pickers like about Philip Morris, Merck, and Pfizer. Each quarter, we take a look at the recent transactions of some of the top money managers around today, who we call our ultimate stock pickers. Today, we're focusing on dividend-paying stocks that are owned by seven or more of these top managers. We're zeroing in on those names that have wide economic moats and that are undervalued according to our metrics. First up is Philip Morris. We have thought for years that the cigarette portfolio alone, which skews to the premium segment and contains Marlboro, the world's largest cigarette brand, made Philip Morris the quality pick of the tobacco group. Philip Morris possesses a formidable franchise in the tobacco industry, and tight government regulations have made barriers to entry almost insurmountable and have kept market shares stable. Plus, the success of the firm's Reduced Risk Products, or RRPs, has given Philip Morris even stronger competitive advantages. It has invested about $8 billion in RRP since 2008, and today the RRP portfolio accounts for 24% of total revenue. Rivals have failed to build an RRP business anywhere close to that. Next is Merck. Merck's combination of a wide lineup of high-margin drugs and a pipeline of new drugs should ensure strong returns on invested capital over the long term. Further, Merck is through the worst of its patent clip, which should remove the heightened generic competition the company has experienced over the past several years. And after several years of only moderate research and development productivity, Merck's drug development strategy is yielding important new drugs. In particular, Keytruda for Cancer represents a key blockbuster with multi-billion dollar potential. It holds a first mover advantage in one of the largest cancer indications of non-small cell lung cancer. Lastly, there's Pfizer. Pfizer's foundation remains solid, based on strong cash flows generated from a basket of diverse drugs. The company's large size provides significant competitive advantages in developing new drugs. This unmatched heft, combined with a broad portfolio of patent-protected drugs, has helped Pfizer build a wide economic moat around its business. Also, After many years of struggling to bring out important new drugs, Pfizer is now launching several potential blockbusters in cancer, heart disease, and immunology. Expand your investing horizons and look to the long term with Morningstar's podcast, The Long View. Join hosts Christine Benz and Jeff Patak as they talk to influential leaders in investing, advice, and personal finance. Search for and subscribe to The Long View today. Now, here are Susan Jabinski from Morningstar, Inc. and Russ Kennel from Morningstar Research Services. Hi, I'm Susan Jabinski with Morningstar. The number of funds dedicated to investing in companies that score well on environmental, social, and governance issues has soared. In fact, these days, an investor can build a pretty well-diversified portfolio strictly of ESG funds. Joining me today to talk about some of Morningstar's favorite ESG funds across a variety of categories is Russ Kennel. Russ is Morningstar's Director of Manager Research and Editor of Morningstar Fund Investor. Hi, Russ. Thank you for being here today. Glad to be here. So we've seen some growth in ESG funds in fund categories where there really wasn't a lot of representation before. Let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, that's right. Uh, As you you mentioned, uh, if you go back in the history of ESG funds, say 10 or 15 years ago, most of them were uh, large cap uh, U.S. equity funds. Uh, but now you really see ESG uh, s- strategies across the board, just about any kind of uh, equity or bond category, and, and certainly uh, bonds have really taken off. So uh, as you say, there's many more options now if you're an ESG investor. And actually, one of the first picks we're going to talk about is a bond fund, um, PIMCO to- Total Return ESG. And this is PIMCO's flagship fund, but with an ESG spin to it. Is that right? That's right. So same managers, same core strategy, uh, but they adapt it to ESG a little. And in order to do that, they look, they will uh, overweight 
uh, issuers with improving ESG factors and underweight some with uh, declining ESG factors. As you might guess, uh, that manifests itself mostly in the corporate bond sleeve. Uh, it le leaves the fund with a slightly higher quality tilt uh, for corporate bonds than, the, than PIMCO total return, uh, which kind of makes sense if you think about uh, ESG being a bit of a risk framework that it might lead you to a little higher quality, but uh, you know, performance is, has been good. And uh, in general, it's very close to uh, what you see from PIMCO total return. And, that, and the, this fund in particular gets a gold fund analyst rating, is that right? That's right. We rate it gold. And then pivoting over to equities, um, a fund we like is Parnassus Core Equity. And Parnassus has been doing ESG investing for a, a really long time. Tell us a little bit about the strategy here. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a silver rated fund uh, run by Todd Alstein, a uh, large blend fund with uh, some ESG screens that screen out quite a bit of the universe, but uh, they have a relatively focused portfolio of uh, high quality names. And, you know, after those ESG screens, of course, they're looking for companies that can outperform just like any active manager. Uh, and if you look at the performance, you can see uh, they've really succeeded. Another fund we like that focuses largely on U.S. large caps is Brown Advisor Sustainable Growth. Tell us a little bit about that strategy. Uh, yeah, this is a silver rated large growth fund. Uh, growth strategies do work pretty well with ESG because they take you away from some of the energy and uh, coal and, and, and other uh, industries like tobacco. Uh, so uh, growth is sort of a natural place. Uh, and, and again, we've got ESG screens, good results. Uh, you know, our, our analyst rating is about the likelihood of outperformance versus a benchmark. So ESG funds still have to go through the same paces that we put uh, regular funds through. So we, we still obviously think highly of it as that silver rating indicates. And then overseas, we have Vanguard ESG International Stock. Um, we assign that one a gold fund analyst rating. And that fund hasn't been around for very long, right? That's right. It's, it's only a couple years old. Uh, it's an ETF. Um, and you mentioned uh, that one of the changes that is that a, a lot of funds, there are in a lot of areas that didn't exist any before for ESG. But another change is that now you can get ESG really cheap. This is only 15 basis points for an ETF. It used to be pretty costly to get uh, an ESG fund. This is an international index uh, screen for ESG criteria. Uh, so you get an ESG uh, uh, investment, but you get it for very cheap. You get broad exposure. So it's a, a nice core holding and we rate it gold. Well, Russ, thank you so much for your time today and giving us some great ideas, some great building blocks to build an ESG portfolio around. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. I'm Susan Jabinski with Morningstar. Thank you for tuning in. Six days a week, we deliver the latest news for investors. Just say, Alexa, enable the Morningstar skill or visit Morningstar.com slash Alexa. Next, Damian Conover from Morningstar Research Services discusses the healthcare sector. Looking at the healthcare sector today, and one of the areas where we've seen some nice performance, the group is up almost 30% over the last 12 months. While that's been pretty strong performance, the overall market is up almost 50%. So there's a little bit of underperformance in healthcare relative to the overall market. And we think a lot of that has to do with about potential concerns around new U.S. policies that could hurt drug pricing power and could potentially hurt some of the managed care organizations. But when we take a look at overall valuation right now, we think the overall healthcare space looks like it's largely fairly valued to slightly overvalued. But again, the two areas that we think have the most interest are the drug manufacturers and managed care sectors because of this concern around potential U.S. healthcare policy reforms. Going forward, as we look ahead, we think both groups look well positioned for growth, and we think only moderate policy change will happen, largely because the Democrats only control a slight majority in the Senate. And healthcare policy reform is very complex, and we don't think it will happen rapidly or to a huge extent. 
as we think about the quarter ahead, we do think there's going to be some normalization coming back into the overall healthcare landscape, which we think is particularly important for any healthcare industry that's more elective in nature. So areas like dental, devices, even some hospital elective procedures, those should start to rebound. And we're forecasting herd immunity in the United States to achieve it by the middle point of the summer, potentially even earlier, depending on how fast the vaccine rollout can happen. That should move us even more close to a more normalized environment as we progress through the year. When we think about names that we think look undervalued, a couple of stocks we really like are Biomarin, and Biogen, these are drug manufacturers that have very strong pipelines in areas of neurology and rare diseases. On the managed care side, a name we really like is CVS. While well known for its retail pharmacy, it really generates a lot of cash flow from its managed care organization. So overall, while the healthcare space looks moderately overvalued, we do think the drug manufacturers and the managed care industry look undervalued and well positioned for, for investors. And lastly, David Meets from Morningstar Research Services talks about the energy sector. For the second quarter in a row, the Morningstar U.S. Energy Index eclipsed the overall market, beating the Agri Index by over 28% in the first quarter. The ongoing rollout of COVID vaccinations is the primary driver, since the reopening of the global economy should eliminate the need for stay-at-home orders and travel restrictions that have been suppressing crude demand in the last 12 months. We still think global consumption will be back at 2019 levels within two years. Nonetheless, there are fresh challenges. European countries are on the brink of extending lockdowns into April, given rising infections, and the safety and effectiveness of the AstraZeneca vaccine in particular has been called into question in some parts of the world. However, this does not derail our thesis that developed countries can achieve herd immunity during 2021. Prospects for full global herd immunity have receded given the spread of vaccine-resistant strains, especially in emerging economies where vaccination rates are lagging. But vaccines still lower the risk of serious disease, even if they don't prevent infection as effectively. So life can still mostly return to normal around the world, and that should support a recovery in crude demand. But producers remain cautious. Despite the recent oil rally, OPEC remains skeptical on the pace of the recovery and has extended cuts into April. Likewise, U.S. shale firms are reluctant to increase activity and volumes could contract slightly in 2021 year on year. As a result, the market looks very tight in 2021, which is why WTI crude prices have climbed past our $55 a barrel mid-cycle forecast. Unless we see a meaningful setback in COVID vaccinations or an abrupt change in strategy from OPEC or the U.S. shale industry, then this frothiness could persist for much of 2021. But long-term investors should be mindful that these price levels are higher than the marginal cost of supply and are unsustainable. So while energy stocks still look cheap, we no longer expect a commodity tailwind, which means investors should be picky and prioritize high-quality businesses with stable balance sheets. Our top picks include Exxon, Schlumberger, and EOG Resources. That does it for this week's Investing Insights podcast from Morningstar. We hope you have enjoyed our program and we welcome your feedback. Please send your comments and questions to podcast at Morningstar.com. From everyone here at Morningstar, thanks for listening. This recording is for informational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Opinions expressed are as of the date of recording. Such opinions are subject to change. The views and opinions of guests on this program are not necessarily those of Morningstar Inc. and its affiliates. Morningstar and its affiliates are not affiliated with this guest or his or her business affiliates unless otherwise stated. Morningstar does not guarantee the accuracy or the completeness of the data presented herein. The podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered tax advice. Please consult a tax and or financial professional for advice specific to your individual circumstances. Morningstar Research Services LLC is a subsidiary of Morningstar Inc. and is registered with and governed by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Morningstar Research Services shall not be responsible for any trading decisions, damages, or other losses resulting from or related to the information, data analysis, or opinions or their use. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. All investments are subject to investment risk, including possible loss of principal. Individuals should seriously consider if an investment is suitable for them by referencing their own financial position, investment objectives, and risk profile before making any investment decision.